in this lesson, we wanna talk about finding trigonometric function values using a calculator. We'll also discuss using inverse trigonometric functions to find angles. Okay, so the first topic here is gonna be very, very simple. I just wanna make sure everybody's on the same page with using their calculator. If you're using an online calculator, you can pretty much just skip this part of the lesson. If you see something like the cosine of 60 degrees, we already know from this special right triangle where we have 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees, if we want the cosine of 60 degrees, well, it's adjacent, which is one, over the hypotenuse, which is two, right? As a decimal, this is 0.5. So what I want everybody to do is pull out their calculator that they're gonna use for this course, and it should have a sine key, a cosine key, and a tangent key. You wanna figure out what mode you're in first. So most calculators have a radian mode. We're gonna talk about radians later on. In a degree mode, you wanna select degree mode. So you should be able to just hit the cosine key on your calculator. So it would look like that. And then basically you would have some parentheses that would open up and you just wanna type in 60. Don't worry about trying to find the degree symbol. If you're in degree mode, then it knows you're working with 60 degrees. So you hit the enter key after that. So you hit your enter, your enter key after that, and you should get a result of 0.5. If you're not getting 0.5, then either you typed in the 60 wrong or you're in radian mode. So it's very important if you're not getting the right answer to investigate and figure out what's going on. A common thing that books will tell you to do is always before you start working, hit sine of 90 degrees in your calculator. So that's gonna look like this. You're gonna hit the sine key and then you're gonna put 90 inside of the parentheses. And again, you're just going to hit enter. And then that should produce a value of one. If you get a value that's something like 0.894, you know you're in radian mode and you need to switch it. All right, so what we're gonna do is just run through a few basic problems. Again, just making sure you're on the same page with me. So we have the sine of 170 degrees. So I would just hit my sine key. I would just hit my sine key and then in the parentheses type in 170 and then you're going to hit your enter key. And this should give you, let's say approximately 0.1736 four, eight, one, seven, seven, seven. That's where my calculator cuts off. Usually the book will tell you where they want you to round to. So let's just say we want to round to the nearest 10,000th. So that's four decimal places. So one, two, three, four. Remember this is the tenths, the hundredths, the thousandths, and this is the 10 thousandths. So if I think about it, the digit that follows is a four. So the six would be unchanged and you could just get rid of all these digits that follow. So the sine of 170 degrees is going to be approximately 0 0.1736. All right, let's take a look at another example. So here we have the secant of negative 620 degrees. Now there's a few things here. First off, you might not have a secant key on your calculator. The calculator I use does not have a secant key. So you would say the secant of some angle theta, again, using your reciprocal identity, you could say this is one over the cosine of theta since most calculators do have a cosine key. So you can convert this over and say this is one over the cosine of this negative 620 degrees. Now, another thing you might be concerned with, you've seen throughout the course, if I got a negative angle or an angle whose measure was greater than 360 degrees, I would always find the coterminal angle between zero degrees and 360 degrees. Now you could do that, but if you're using a calculator, you don't have to. This will automatically calculate the value for you. So you're just gonna type one, then the divided by key, hit your cosine key. When the parentheses come up, just type in negative 620. Again, don't worry about the degree symbol, hit enter. And we're gonna get approximately, let me just make a little border here. If I pick up my calculator, I'll say it's negative 5.75, and then I'm going to have eight, seven, seven, zero, four, eight, three. Now with this guy, again, if you wanted to round to the nearest 10 thousandth, that's pretty common for most books. Let's see, we have the tenths, the hundredths, the thousandths, and then the 10 thousandths. So this is the digit that follows. So the seven falls in the category of five or greater. So I would add one to this seven, and then I would cut all these off. So this will turn into an eight. So your answer here for the secant of negative 620 degrees is going to be approximately negative 5.7588. Okay, let's look at cotangent of 670 degrees. So again, you might not have a cotangent key, but more than likely you have a tangent key. So again, from the reciprocal identities, the cotangent of theta 
is equal to one over the tangent of theta. So really you could just say this is equal to one over the tangent of your 670 degrees like this. And again, you could just follow those steps with your calculator, hit one, hit divided by, hit your tangent key inside the parentheses, type in 670, and then close the parentheses and hit enter. And so this is going to be approximately, let's say negative, I'm gonna go 0 0.8, three nine zero nine nine and then we'll have six three one two and again if you wanted to round to the nearest ten thousandth again forget about the fact that it's negative i know that throws off a lot of people you've got one two three four decimal places so this guy right here the digit that follows is a nine so add one to the zero that's going to be one and then you can cut all these digits off so rounding this to the nearest ten thousandth you're going to have negative zero point eight three nine one all right, let's spend a little bit of time now introducing the inverse trigonometric functions. So these are gonna be a little bit confusing for right now. When we get further into the course, we're going to spend a lot of time developing the whole thought process behind how and why these guys are going to work. For right now, I just wanted to think about something simple. Let's say you had the sine of 30 degrees. And again, we have our special right triangle here, so we can immediately see that the opposite is one and the hypotenuse is two. So we know this is one half. And again, you can type that into your calculator and verify you would get 0.5 or a half as a decimal. Now, what if you typed into your calculator sine inverse, so it's gonna look like that where you might see arc sine, that's another way to denote it. But basically, if you took this part right here or your answer from this, so let's say I put that in the parentheses, this is gonna give you this angle measure back. So in other words, it's undoing what you did here. Here, you took sine of your angle, which is 30 degrees, and you want to find the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that gave me a half. Here, you have the inverse sine, and you're taking your opposite over your hypotenuse, and it's going to kick your angle measure, which is 30 degrees, back out to you. So in other words, you could say that you have sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And in this case, you have the sine inverse, which is going to be you plugging in the opposite over the hypotenuse, and you're going to get your angle theta back. But there's a problem here, okay? And it's kind of a big problem, but again, we'll talk about this more later on in the course. If you typed in, let's say, sine of 390 degrees, so this is an angle that's coterminal with 30 degrees, it's going to be in the first quadrant, and it's going to have a reference angle of 30 degrees, well, you would get 0.5 or 1 half. Now, I just saw that if I did sine inverse of 1 half, I get 30 degrees. So I'm not getting my 390 degrees back that I'm looking for. So what's going on? Well, the problem is that sine is not a one-to-one -one function. We talked about this earlier in our pre-calculus course, where for a one-to-one -one function to exist, you have to have for each x value a given y value, and for each y value a given x value. So for each x, there's one y, and for each y, there's one x. Well, that's not going to be true with your sine function. So what happens is you have to restrict the domain in order to make it a one-to-one -one function, and that leads to the fact that if I plugged in one half here, I'm only going to be able to get something in quadrant one, so that's 30 degrees. If I needed to find something else, well, then I'm going to use the concept of a reference angle, and I'm going to think about where sine is positive. So in other words, I know that sine is going to be positive in quadrants one and two. So really, anywhere in quadrants one or two, where I would have a 30 degree reference angle, well, basically, my sine value is going to be a half. If I did sine of, let's say, 150 degrees, that has a 30 degree reference angle, so that's going to be a half. If I added 360 degrees to that, I would have 510 degrees. And if I did the sine of 510 degrees, I would also get a half, so on and so forth. So if you ever get a question, and we'll see them later on in the course, where it says something like the sine of theta is equal to a half, well, there's an infinite number of angle measures there where if you take the sine value of it, you're going to get a half. So generally speaking, when you see these questions, especially in the first part of trigonometry, they're going to tell you that theta is going to be between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. So you're going to be in that first quadrant where 0 degrees and 90 degrees will be included. So let's look at a little example here. So we have sine of theta is equal to 4 fifths. And here theta is restricted, like I was just talking about, to be greater than or equal to 0 degrees and less than or equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so for this one, again, we would just use our inverse sine function. So sine inverse of this guy right here. So this 4 
fifths. So it's like I'm plugging in the opposite over the hypotenuse and I'm looking for my theta and this is going to come from quadrant one. So I'm going to be good to go in terms of this restriction here. So let's punch this into the calculator. So hit your inverse sign key, hit four and then divide it by five, close your parentheses and let me move this over and I'll say theta is equal to this and I'll say this is approximately, let's write out what we have. So 53 point one three zero one and then zero two three five so let's again round this to the nearest ten thousandth so you have tenths hundredths thousandths this is the ten thousandths so the digit that follows is a zero so we can just cut all these off and this is in terms of degrees so our theta here is going to be about or you can say approximately 53.1301 degrees. And again, if you didn't have this restriction here, you could really say that theta could be any angle in either quadrant one or quadrant two, where sine is positive, where the reference angle is equal to this guy right here, right? So there's an infinite number of solutions if you take this guy away, this restriction. All right, so similarly, we have the cosine of theta. This is equal to two sevenths. So here, again, we're gonna say that theta is greater than or equal to zero degrees and less than or equal to 90 degrees. So since this is positive, if we use our inverse cosine function, we're going to get something in quadrant one, so we'll be okay. So I'm going to say that I want my theta to be equal to the inverse cosine, and some people write that as arc cosine like this. And basically, you're just gonna plug this in here, so this two sevenths, and this is going to spit out my angle, my theta, that will be in quadrant one. So let's hit our cosine inverse button. And then inside the parentheses type two divided by seven, close your parentheses and hit enter. And this is approximately, let's go ahead and say, I'll just write out everything it gives me. So 73.3984504, that's where my calculator stops. If we wanna to go to the nearest 10 thousandth, we have the tenths, the hundredths, the thousandths, the 10 thousandths. So well, this guy's a five here, so let me add one to this, and we'll make this into a five, and then you can cut these off. And this is in terms of degrees. So we would say that our theta here is approximately 73.3985 degrees. Now again, if you did not have this restriction here, then theta could be any angle that's in either quadrant one or quadrant four, that's where cosine is positive, that has this reference angle.